Hello, and welcome to Clan Macad. Last time, we had a look at hidden detail views as our first method for showing internal geometry concealed within a single component. Today, we're going to have a look at section views as an alternative method with the same basic purpose in mind. What section views allow us to do is take a physical slice of the object aside and view the internal features as if they were at the surface of the object. To create a section view, you actually need a projected view beside it as a reference. A cutting plane is then marked through this adjacent view, showing the location of the cut through the object and the direction of viewing, which can be found from the arrows leading off of the cutting plane itself. Another way to think about the direction of viewing is that the arrows mark the side of the cutting plane that is going to be kept, and the side with no arrows is the side on where material is being cut off and removed completely. So everything you see here in green is what is being kept, and everything you see in red is what is being removed. So currently, from where we're starting, there is no material removal whatsoever. But let's see what happens as I move the cutting plane across our adjacent or projected view and see what happens to the 3D model as a result. As you can see, the visible geometric information changes as the material is removed, allowing us to see the insides of the object as if they were at the surface. By bringing the cutting plane to align with the centre of the adjacent view, we can create a view that clearly shows the holes that travel through the inside of the object without showing any additional information. Now seeing this in my 3D graphics style is all well and good for understanding the idea, but let's make sure you guys understand the basics of laying this out on a drawing before I let you go. As you can see when creating a section view, you've got to take into account whether you're using first or third angle projection. If you look at the sides the arrows are on in each adjacent view and what material is being removed and kept from what we mentioned earlier, and refer back to the little tricks of remembering third and first angle projection and how they interact with the views next to each other, then you should be able to work out why the arrows are on the right hand side for first angle projection and the left hand side for third angle projection. Now to address the red area, which I'm sure Plenty of experienced draftsmen or anyone who's seen a section before will probably be screaming at the screen right now telling me how horrible it is and showing you all the wrong thing. It does nice and clearly show you where the cut's been made. And that's what it is there for. And we've got to show that in a slightly different way, but I'll get to that in a minute. First, I want to make sure you know exactly where this area should be filled in. The red area is essentially where it's coming into contact with the cutting plane and material is being removed above it. If you think of it as an analogy, as a piece of cheese that's, you know, been exposed to the air, the external surfaces are all slightly discoloured, essentially if you were to take a knife to that and cut it in half, then the fresh, unaired surface of cheese would be the area you're trying to highlight where the cut has been made and material has been removed. To get rid of the big red graphic area and put in what's supposed to be there for drawing standards, what we need to do is put in a consistent pattern known as typically a hatching pattern and in this case, we want to use ANSI 31, A-N-S-I 31. And that is an American standard, essentially, that is all-in-one hatching pattern for any material that you're cutting. There are specific hatching patterns you can use for specific materials to show what it is you're sectioning. However, ANSI 31 is a good one for just jack-of-all-trades, master of none. It just shows you that the material is being cut. So, the pattern is consistently spaced 45 degree lines that fill exactly the same area as I previously had in red. Again, missing open areas, holes, all the rest of that exact same fill space, except they're a little less clear than if you were to color it in or shade it in or whatnot. However, this was originally designed for draftsmen on a board that didn't want to spend their whole day coloring in sections of engineering drawings. It's a little bit more precise and intended this way. So we'll get into some of the more advanced rules and conditions around sections because there's plenty of little exceptions and rules and things you've got to follow if you really, really want to use them properly. But I just wanted to get the basics across for now. So hope this was helpful. Thanks very much for watching and I will see you next time.